Hello everyone. Welcome to GoVM Lab NSX V for Beginners lecture series. In this particular lab exercise, we are going to learn about how do we go and configure static routing on our Edge Services Gateway and our distributed logical router. We need to configure static routing to enable communication between our VMs connected to our NSX backed logical network to our VMs which are connected to our external network. In a very simplistic word, we could say that we need to configure this static routing to enable communication between NSX back logical world and our physical networking world. So with that, let's go and get started with our lab exercise. Now, before we go and get started with our lab exercise, let me walk you through our current topology and the IP addressing schemes. It is very important to understand the IP addressing schemes so that we can easily correlate all of our static routing configuration. So let me walk you through our topology diagram first before we go ahead and configure static routing. Now, if you look at this particular topology diagram, so that's the topology what we have discussed so far in our previous lectures. So let's go and understand this topology once again. So here, as you do see that we have our logical NSX backed logical networks like web tier, app tier, db tier, and we have our respective VMs connected to their respective logical switches. We have also used IP network 172.16.10.x network for our web tier, 20.x network for our app tier, and 30.x network we have used it for our db tier. Now, if similarly, if you do see that, we have configured our distributed logical router. So that's our distributed logical router. And we have a three uplink interfaces defined on our distributed logical night logical router as you rightly see that 172 16 10.1 20.1 and 30.1 are the internal interfaces of our distributed logical router whereas 192 168 10.2 is the uplink interface of our distributed logical router now if you look at this particular section of our distributed logical router it actually go and enables east west traffic communication but for the north south communication we need to deploy additional component called Edge Services Gateway and which we have discussed in our previous lecture. Now, if you look at the interface configuration of our Edge Services Gateway, so our Edge Services Gateway is having a one interface, which is internal interface, which is connected to our transit network. And then this Edge Services Gateway has another interface, which is type as uplink connected to the external network. It could be external router as well, and, and that's where basically you do see that 192.168.10.1 and 10.2 is the network. We call it as a transit network. Now, what this network does is actually connecting our Edge Services Gateway to our distributed logical router. So we need to memorize or we need to make a note of these two network IPs. We need to make a note of these two interfaces IPs 10.1 and 10.2 as well as we also need to make a note of these two IPs 192.168.100.2 and 100.1. Now let me let me revise it again. One of the two important points before we go ahead and configure static routing on our distributed logical router as well as as well as on our Edge Services Gateway. Now 192.168.10.x network we are using it between our DLR uplink interface and our Edge Services Gateway internal interface. So that's the network. What we are using it is 192.168.10.x network and 192.168.100.x network. We are using it to connect our Edge Services Gateway to our external network. So 100.x is the network. We are using it for the external connectivity where 10.x network we are using it to connect our Edge Services Gateway to the distributed logical router. Now, the one last thing before we go ahead and configure static routes, what we need to understand is the IO path. For example, how the packet will flow when our VM1, which is having an IP address 172.16.10.2, trying to reach out to the external VM, having an IP address 10.10.10.2. Now, just enabling just enabling Edge Services Gateway is not going to enable communication between these two virtual machines. 
or between these two networks we need to configure routing protocol so that basically our vm1 can have a routing details to reach out to the external vm and that's what we're gonna do it as a part of our static routing configurations now if you do see that one thing to remember that when the packet come to this distributed logical router we need to tell that hey distributed logical router if you want to reach out to 10.10.2 network then please send a packet or drop a packet to this particular interface that's the information we need to give it to our distributed logical router and similarly we also need to tell our edge services gateway like hey edge services gateway if you want to forward any packet to a vm which is part of 172.16.10.x network then please send this packet to this particular interface having a ip address as 192.168.10.2 so that would be the path you would be forwarding the packet to and any packet which is coming from our virtual machine has to reach out to our external vm then we need to also need to tell our edge services gateway that if you want to reach out to 10.10.10x network then please drop this packet to this particular IP 192.168.100.2 and that is the IP of our external devices. So that's the simplistic configurations we need to do it as a part of our static routing and once we do those configurations and we provide the next hop details our VMs connected to our NSX backed logical network in our case web tier will start communicating to our VM which is part of our external network and which is external VM in our case. So now we are pretty good from the topology perspective we are pretty good from the from the static routing perspective now let's go and configure static routing and understand how these vms will start communicating as soon as we push the routes to our edge services gateway and our distributed logical router now let's get started with our static routing configurations on our edge services gateway and distributed logical router so click here to start our lab click here to access our vcenter server that's a pretty standard vCenter UI. So let's give a username as administrator at the rate of vSphere.local. Let's provide the password. Click here to log in. And as you could see that we are successfully logged into our vCenter UI. Now click here to browse our data center. It's pretty standard configurations what we have it. That's a compute cluster A, compute cluster B, and let's browse our management and edge cluster. Now click on web 01 AVM, click here to launch console and look at that. That's the IP of our virtual machine 172.16.10.2. That's the IP of our virtual machine, which is connected to our NSX backed logical network, which is web tier. Now click to go back to a vSphere client and that is our VM, which we are referring as an external VM. Now, when we say external VM, what does that mean? It means that this particular VM is not part of our NSX logical network boundary. It is out of our NSX logical boundary and connected to our external network. So click on our external VM. Click here to launch console of that VM and look at that. The IP of this virtual machine is 10.10.10.2. So that's our external network 10.10.10.x. Now let's go back to our web VM. Let's run the command ping. 10.10.2 we are trying to have a connectivity check between our web vm and our external vm so let's press the enter key and let's see that whether the communication happens and as you do see that the communication doesn't work there is no ping traffic is running though we have deployed our edge services gateway so in the previous lecture we had deployed our edge services gateway but even after deploying edge services gateway as you rightly see that because there are there are no routing configurations have been successfully done as of now to enable this communication and that's what we are going to do it now so now let's click on menu go to networking and security click on nsx edges and we do see that that's our distributed router so let's first go and configure static routing on our distributed router so click on edge one click on routing section so that's the routing section click on routing and now as of now we are actually going to configure static routes in a subsequent lectures we would be talking about ospf configurations or bgp configurations but as of now we are just going to focus on our static routes so click on static routes click here to add 
static route and now we need to configure a static route we need to tell dlr that if you have any packet coming up with 10.10.10.0/24 network then please forward this packet to the next hop and what is the ip of that next hop 192.168.10.1 and if you go back to that diagram which we had discussed that is the ip of our edge services gateway internal interface so the packet has to hand over to our edge services gateway internal interface and that's where we need to select the interface so we are going to use the transit network or uplink interface of our distributed logical router to send this packet to our internal interface of our edge services gateway now click here to add and as you do see that we have successfully created a static route on our distributed logical router so that's our destination network so we have tell the distributed router that if any packet which is coming to you with 10.10.10.x network then please forward this packet to a next hop having the ip as 192.168.10.1 and then that is the interface what we are using it of our dlr to forward this packet to the next hop now as of now this rule has not been punched as soon as we click on publish the rule will be populated so click on publish and now as you could see that our, our route has been successfully configured and this static route has been successfully pushed to our dlr routing table so now what is the next step the next step is basically we need to go and configure similar static route routing configuration on our edge services gateway as well so click on edge services gateway again click on the routing tab so click on routing and again go back to the static routes so click on static routes click here to add a new static route and now if you remember in our topology diagram we discussed that on the edge services gateway we need to add two routes the one route will be telling us that hey edge services gateway if you get any packet with the destination address as 10.10.10.0/24 then please forward this packet to your next hop and your next hop is going to be the interface of your external routing device and 192.168.100.2 is the interface of our external routing device which is the next hop to our edge services gateway click here to add now the next route what we are going to add it the next route we are going to add it which is going to tell our edge services gateway that hey edge services gateway if you are getting any packet as a destination address as 172.16.10.0 what does that mean it means that you are enabling a packet you are enabling a communication from your external vm to your edge services you are sending a packet from external vm to your web to your vm so if receive if you receive any packet with this 172.16.10.0 network then please forward this packet to your next hop which is 192.168.10.2 and what is this 192.168.10.2 please look at that diagram again and that is going to be our dlr uplink interface so click here to add and now as you do see that we have added two rules the first rule is saying that if any packet coming with the destination address is 10.10.10.x network please forward this packet to the next hop having ip address as 192.168.100.2 and if any packet which is coming up with the 172.16.10.0 network then please forward this packet to a ip address or interface having ip address 192.168.10.2 now let's go and save these rules so click on publish and as soon as we click on publish these rules get saved let's go back to our virtual machine and let's see that now do we see the communication is happening or not between our external vm and our web services vm so let's go back to our vm and look at that as soon as we have configured static routes on our dlr and the edge services gateway correctly we do see that our ping started working and our web vm is successfully able to communicate to our external vm having ip address 10.10.10.2 so this conclude our lecture on how do we go and configure static routing on our edge services gateway and distributed logical router we hope you enjoyed this lecture thanks for your time
please like share and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you